April this year marked 27 years since the events of the genocide against the Tutsis in Rwanda began, when the country experienced the most harrowing period in its history. What really happened in 1994, once the genocide started on, on April 7th, the whole country uh, went mad. Uh, people uh, started killing the, their friends, their neighbors. Cousin, aunties, uncles, most of, we lost um, so many people here in Rwanda. Almost a million people were killed during the genocide. But over the years since, sport has played a huge part in reconciling the two sides. For many Rwandans, it has helped with healing and rebuilding their once troubled nation. I wanted to use my experience of, of surviving the genocide um, in a way that would uh, help younger people to understand why sport is more than just what we normally see it for, which is fun and leisure. Because in that moment of need, the power of sport basically saved my life. Eric Morangwa is a genocide survivor and a former national football player. In 2010, he set up the Ish Army Foundation with the aim of engaging with the young people of his homeland. Through football, Eric and his team of coaches encourage unity and promote a message of tolerance and lasting peace. Genocide is a very complex topic to talk about, to, to think about. If you're going to help young people 10, 12, 13 years old to really understand, because it's very, very important for them to understand it, uh, then you have to f find, you know, a way that they can uh, understand it without being, you know, troubled that much. When we do it on football field, it tends to make more impact. For many Rwandans, the scars are still very real, but football has provided them with a lifeline, one full of hope. <laughs> Jamali Moiz Senenza lost his whole family during the genocide. These days, he's the assistant coach of national champions Rayon Sports FC, having spent his entire playing career with the Kigali club. Football helped me forget the tough times that I went through, and I would find myself being happy with others. You see, when you score a goal, the players hug you and you no longer feel lonely. The fans are close to you too. All that helped me forget the things that I went through. I found football to be a good thing. It lowers stress levels and makes you feel good in yourself. Adrian Neon Shuti was another who lost all the members of his immediate family. However, the gift of a bicycle from his uncle helped nurture a love for the sport that has seen him become his country's number one cyclist. My uncle was a, a best cyclist before the genocide. When I went to visit him, he always pushed me. He wanted me to be a cyclist. And I remember some of the words he was told me because he have a, seven children and they die in doing the genocide and his wife. And he was telling me, ah, now I stopped cycling, I wish my son was still alive, he can be cycling. A former member of the Rwandan national team, the 34-year-old has competed at world tour level and represented his country at the 2012 London Olympics. These days, he runs his own cycling academy, inspiring the next generation of Rwandan cyclists. Following the genocide, many Rwandan refugees returned home from neighbouring countries, some of whom brought with them the sport of cricket. 27 years ago, the sport barely existed in the East African nation. Today, it's the country's fastest growing sport. Eddie B. Magarara is president of the Rwanda Cricket Association. It's quite remarkable in a space of about 10 years to have the game grow so fast. And uh, just last year, 
we managed to bring on more than 3,000 new players into the game in just 2018. Cricket is now played in schools and communities across 14 different districts in Rwanda. Mary Minor, a former captain of the women's national side, is a big ambassador for the sport here. It's kind of a family. It's no longer a sport in Rwanda. It's not just a sport. It's more like a lifestyle where people are one big family, massive cricket family. Dominic Bizimana and Jean Rukondo were on opposite sides during the conflict in Rwanda. Both men lost their legs fighting in the 1990s, but they managed to put their pasts aside, joining the national sitting volleyball team and representing Rwanda at the 2012 Paralympics. Also always a joke because, you know, sometimes when we are together, you know, after a game, you know, we are uh, talking to each other, you know, we are joking. So I always imagine that it was the one who shot at me. So, and also yeah. vice versa. Because, you know, this, because this show that, you know, sports, you know, you can, you can talk about everything that, you know, someone cannot talk. So that's why, you know, sports really has the power. Very well, I teach someone, some groups to be Rwandan, to be united, to don't look at the past, look at the future. We have to build our country. We have a mission to change. We have a mission to teach a very way that our country will be built by his people.